All right, folks, thanks for your patience. We had a few technical difficulties today, but welcome to episode 29 of Ask Evelyn, where we answer your questions about garbage, recycling, trash, and other trashy topics. We are so excited that you could join us today, and again, thank you for hanging with us. So, oh, and actually while we're waiting for Pat, this is a really great question that just came in the chat. Um, so someone wants to know where our compost goes when it's picked up, which is a really great question. And because we're talking about composting this month, it's awesome. So when we pick up your compost, where it goes to is it goes to one of two transfer stations. It goes to either the North Station or the South Station. One is in Wallingford, Fremont area, and the other one is down by the First Avenue South Bridge in South Park. From there, it's transferred into trailers and it's taken to one of two locations, both of which are up north of the city. One location is called Lens Enterprises and that's in Stanwood, Washington. They are a second or third generation family owned kind of bulk materials business. And they take about 70% of the material that we put into our green carts for composting and it's fantastic. They just do an amazing job and it's, it's unbelievable. They're just like mountains and mountains of material there and it's an amazing system. The other about 30% goes to Cedar Grove, which many of you may have heard of. They also have, you know, they sell compost and you see it at the hardware store and that material goes to, they actually have two yards. Their big processor is in Maple Valley, but we send that 30% of material up to Everett, which is pretty, pretty cool too. So all of that stuff stays local, which is another reason why we really emphasize that composting is such a great thing to do because you're literally kind of closing that loop from taking that organic material, putting it into your compost cart, it's getting picked up, it goes all the way back to one of those facilities in Everett or Stanwood, which is not that far. It gets broken down into compost and a lot of that material, those of you who buy Cedar Grove compost, that goes right back into your gardens. Those of you who attend our compost giveaway events that we have several times a year, we were only able to host one this year because of COVID, but that amazing material comes from Lens Enterprises. And so that's just a really great way. Every time you put something into your compost cart, it's part of that system. So it's cycling the nutrients, it's keeping stuff local, it's supporting family run businesses. It's really a pretty awesome thing that you guys do every day and we as a city are super, super excited to be able to offer you as a super convenient service. Whether you're at home, you're going out to a restaurant or, or you have a business, all of those things are really great op an option. Comes Pat. Ooh, and then we've got another really good question too while we're getting Pat logged on is, how long has composting been <laughs> curbside? Hi, Pat. Hi. <laughs> I know it's been it's been a it's been a show for technical difficulties. So apparently Instagram has made some improvements. Right. That didn't uh, get the memo. I didn't get the memo either. So hopefully this works. Um, my video is a little bit choppy, so hopefully that's okay. But welcome. You're great. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. I was I was already late, but I it looks like some folks have hung with us, so that's great. Um, so. Um, let's see, should we just jump into our great questions? We can jump right in. I don't know what you had covered. I see a question in the chat about how long we've been composting in Seattle. Did you get onto that? Question? We haven't done that one yet. So why don't we take that away, Pat? Why don't you, why don't you, why All right. we let me just that jump into that. Then, then, then we'll jump into the show. Okay. okay. So in 1988, I think is when we first started doing the uh, curbside collection of yard waste. And it was just yard waste, just grass clippings right. and leaves and branches and whatnot. And uh, customers had to provide their own cans. It was a subscriber-based system. So you put your own cans out there. You'll still see these cans kicking around Seattle. They're, um, they'll have like YW, who was painted on the side <laughs> of an old metal trash can, the yard waste. So you had to say yard waste on your can because your other can was the garbage can. So you had to indicate right, which exactly. one was which. And then they only went like eight months of the year. They shut it down and like... Oh. November and they wouldn't start up again until March or something because there just wasn't anything really going on. So sure. um, it was, it was, that was the beginnings of it. And that program in the late eighties was the, um, you know, the start of compost collection via truck. And that's how Cedar Grove started out. They, they started their operation back then under that contract. So that's what really got us going and all this now look at where we're at now. I mean, it's just, it's amazing really. I know it's pretty cool. And then if you think about, um, 
when we started collecting food waste, that was something that started in about 2008 for single family residents. And then we slowly added multifamily and businesses. To That's that. right. And a lot of that was done in partnership with our local processors. Like you said, in 88, we yeah. really started that up with Cedar Grove, who was a collection company right. for hauling all kinds right. of waste, not just organics. And then, you know, working with Lens and working with Cedar Grove to figure out a system that could accommodate all of that food waste. And then some of the food packaging was pretty cool. But wow, 2008 doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was a while ago. So we've been at it for quite yeah. some time. That's right. It's, it's been growing. <laughs> so, yeah. So the questions, yeah. shall we jump right into our questions? I know you've been on the show for a minute here, so I can, I can kick us off with Q1 if you're ready. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay, so it's a long question. Let me see if I can read it here. Hello, Evelyn. Just want to make sure these items are approved to put in my food waste compost cart. Plastic food containers from Pagliacci. It has a sticker saying compostable. Plastic greeting card sleeves from Trader Joe's. It's a little plastic looking sleeve. The signage in the store says that it's compostable and okay in Seattle. Plastic utensils from the restaurants, the ones that you get on takeout, and they say compostable. And then she finishes by saying, I know the plastic water bottle caps are recyclable if attached to an empty container. Does that apply to other plastic bottles such as soda, juice, condiment snacks, laundry detergent, etc.? I also want to make sure <laughs> I'm properly composting and recycling. Thank you. So I'm, I also want to, anyway, point is that her name is Nancy and she asked a variety of questions, three about composting, one about recycling. We'll do the compost ones first, right? Absolutely. Okay. So the first question, I have some visual aids. I'm all prepared here with my uh, photographs of uh, products. So I'm going to try to do a flip through here, everybody. See if this works. See if you can see, aha, yes, it worked. There we so, go. You can see my laptop screen there, and I and we are a Pagliacci ordering family here. We get them. so Pagliacci always does these awesome Seattle themed uh, boxes. That and was you can see great. the yeah the um, the salad container has that little sticker on it. I think I have okay. a close up here. Yeah. yeah. So fully compostable. I think Elevate Packaging is like the name of the brand oh, or something. Okay. Yeah. So I don't really know what that part means, but it has the word compostable on it. So we're good. I mean, that's really a that's what you want to look for when you see the term compostable on packaging, you are good to go. So Pagliacci, they're on board. Now, if if by chance they were to run out of this compostable uh, salad to go container, they're actually still compliant to use a plastic salad container and deliver you a, you know, a polypropylene or a PET or HTP or whatever. They could use plastic as takeaway. Only dine-in has to be compostable. Home delivery, okay. we like it to be compostable. It's easier for the customer when it's compostable. But um, so I'm not saying, I'm not making a statement here that all Pagliacci to-go containers are compostable, but they probably are. It looks like they've made that commitment. So the next, if I'm not mistaken, yes, was, I can bring it back up here. Um, we have this about the greeting card sleeve. And um, Trader Joe's, also a great company that takes initiatives doing a lot of these different products and different packaging elements in their variety of uh, like brand, Trader Joe's brand stuff. So um, this was a greeting card sleeve, I guess it was, a, it was a thin plastic kind of like sleeve that the card was slid into. Um, that's not a food and beverage packaging item that will have been gone through the testing process at one of the compost facilities. So unfortunately, that's a no-go in our program. Uh, not, not because it's necessarily, you know, not gonna work, it just has never been tested. So um, we love it when all these companies, I love it, I love it when all, this is not the SPU's voice, this is Pat's voice, but um, <laughs> I love it when all these companies, you know, take steps to, sure. you know, develop product and start to use plant-based, you know, polymers instead of petroleum-based polymers and kind of, you know, and, and build these new packaging elements that are sort of, new and groundbreaking and entrepreneurial, but it, they also have to do their homework and kind of get connected locally and make sure it's tested in the local sure. facilities because no matter what it's made from or no matter what they have designed in their R&D and development, it has to pass and actually break down and become part of a value added element to the compost uh, system. And there's only two things, either value add or not value add. So, right. you know, I mean, 
So, because sometimes there's things like, well, it doesn't really add that much value to the finished grid of the compost. Well, it may not add a lot of nutrient value, but it's not negatively impacting the compost. Right. So to me, it's very binary. It's like, it's either an okay item or it's not. And right. that item, that product is not tested. So it wouldn't be allowed in the cart. Totally. Yeah. So Pat, I had, um, you know, technical issues about this month, this, uh, this episode yeah. apparently. So my feed's a little bit glitchy. So I apologize if you already covered it. But I did bring, as part of Nancy's question, kind of um, utensils. And this one might be yeah. kind of hard to read. Um, maybe let's try this one. So this one says compostable oh, yeah. right on here, right? Yeah, I can and just so, pick that up, yeah. And so these are the kinds of, this is how you would know, right? Similarly to having right. that sticker on the Pagliacci to go container, it's like if a utensil has this word compostable on it, then you're good right. to go, right? And similarly, We've talked a lot about that's the key word, right? We've got like, this right. has got a leaf on it and all that, but the fact that it says compostable and you see that this cup happens to say in a commercially composting facility. So that's, kind of what you were talking about. Yeah, it's like, it very common, good. very common terminology. Um, right. So the thing about what we like to say in Seattle is, you know, looking for the word compostable because that will mean it's gone through its lab tests and it's been developed correctly and things. And then the food and beverage packaging kind of spectrum of packaging is what's okay in your cart. Um, that item, you know, it says compostable, so it's good. But if it said Eco Earth <laughs> and it had the leaf and the chasing arrow, no go. Yeah. Exactly. Biodegradable, yeah. right. plant based, none of that. Right. Yeah. That we really, mean we really, there's a lot of products out there that are, they're trying, they think they know what they're doing, but right. they're really not quite there yet. And so it kind of falls in that greenwashing kind of category of like, well, you're, you're presenting a product and it's actually not helpful because you know it's not approved yet it's not compostable and right so i uh, wish you wouldn't do that but what can you do right. You know? right and then let's see is the last part about of nancy's question is about plastic caps on plastic bottles right yes yes so any of those things are fine i mean right. she lists off a, a number of things from soda j bottles to condiments and detergents plastic on plastic that's the main thing i mean i have one that's a reusable here I didn't really bring it for a prop, but basically if it's a plastic bottle and a plastic cap, you're good to go. We want it to be empty, clean and dry. I mean, that's right. the guideline for all recyclables. But the challenge is like sometimes there's plastic caps on glass bottles. Sometimes there's metal containers with plastic caps. None of those things are okay. It's gotta be plastic, plastic together. Right, awesome. And I mean, what a great question. Nancy is like on it. Nancy, yeah. thank you for that question. That's fantastic. Nancy. <laughs> Come back to us next month with more, will you? <laughs> I know we got we got you know we we got you covered. So thanks for that's thanks right. For that. All right, our second question, near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm luckily out of this phase, but it is such an important one when you are in it. It's about diapers. So okay. we got this question from Ellen, and it says, "Is diaper composting anywhere on the horizon? What about pet waste?" Maybe you've already discussed this and I missed it, but it would be great to know why human and pet waste can't go into the compost. So Ellen, fantastic question. And it was a longer question that we kind of edited a little bit, you know, she's a new parent. And so this is a, a question and concern that comes up a lot. It's like cloth versus disposable, right? And, you know, right. eco, eco-minded folks are really thinking about this. I know when my kids were yeah. really little and still in diapers, you know, and you've got some some experiences to share as well. Um, it's it's a really it's a big topic, right? It generates yeah. a lot of waste, yeah. and yeah. Um, I think kind of taking this apart in a couple of places. I know that right now in the marketplace there are a lot of diapers that are listed natural, compostable, very mm -hmm. much so. You know, following the thread from the first question, we do not accept any diapers in our composting no. system, and no. right away the reason we don't is multifold, you know, multifaceted. But one of the primary ones is that we are not, none of our facilities are able and permitted to uh, compost and deal with the pathogens that come with human and pet waste. That's, right. yeah. that's a very big one. So um, that's, that's a huge point right there that Ellen was asking about. And another one is that, you know, composting diapers, for those of you who have experienced, you know, diapers, there's, for those disposable ones, there is a lot of different stuff in there. Right. There's kind of yeah. the organic biological waste, but there's also, you know, um, like more like absorbent materials in there. There's right. plastic, there's all these right. different fibers, and that would have to be separated, yeah. which is quite a task. So right. 
And, you, you know, know. there can be companies that are, that are able to develop, uh, you know, with all those different layers of material that have different functions in the product, um, they can develop like, you know, a couple layers that are plant-based right. and truly could be compostable in a commercial compost system. But then the middle layer isn't because it has to right. perform a certain function. Exactly. And so they're working on that. But they don't bother to wait. They go ahead and blast their marketing. Now, we are 85% yeah. plant-based, recycled. You know, right. Who knows what they say. So right. it's like, great. There's a lot That's of that. Super. Thanks for getting on the path to compostable. Right. But you're not. You haven't arrived yet. So right. that's what's really a challenge. And, and system wide, you know, on our side of the book, we haven't arrived there yet. We're not ready to yeah. receive that stuff. We have a health department who would have to approve this. We actually wouldn't compost it with the food and yard waste. We, we yeah. would probably process it in a separate closed vessel system because of the pathogens. You'd have to take the heat up to a crazy level, like the hospitals, how they do those, you know they have to steam everything and, and right. make sure everything's when they're autoclaving all... and stuff like that absolutely. autoclave just... that's the term I was, I was losing that term good job <laughs> so um yeah i mean we're not going to do that with our diaper no. you know with our collection program we're going to do something different someday and it is in the in the planning right we have it in, it in our long long-term goal i know over in your section you guys talk about this stuff sometimes and absolutely it's, it's going to be on somebody's work plan one of these days but exactly uh, it, it's definitely are... i mean it's a it's a big part of the waste stream so from our the the most current data we have is from our composition studies in 2014 which is where we literally go through and we look at all of the different pieces that make up the garbage stream and so at that point yeah. in 2014 with the combination of diapers alone, they were almost seven and a half percent of the total material that was in the garbage. So that's quite a bit. And then kind of animal byproducts, which I'm assuming would probably include pet waste was about 10%. So it's a sizable yeah. amount of the waste stream. It's right. heavy. Um, if you can separate it out and deal with it, that's a fair amount. We are not quite there yet, but it is certainly absolutely on our, you know, kind of we're thinking about that in our long-term planning yeah. but we don't have any definitive and, plans to implement a system like that yet and every time we do another thing you know we, we kind of pull in some food packaging we, we you know a couple three years ago we we banned plastic straws and those are all compostable that's not a big sliver of the waste stream but the point is every time we make it advance and we move something out of the garbage kit panel into recycle or compost then that piece of what's left in the garbage gets bigger right yeah i mean diapers and pet waste have over the last 10, 20 years, gone from a fraction of the waste to a pretty good portion of right. what's left in the waste stream. So sure. I know in my household, you know, if we didn't have a couple cats and have the litter, the kitty litter, you know, we'd have very little garbage because we just do a, you know, we do a lot of diversion. But that stuff is just like, it's probably 90% by weight, by volume as right. well, of what leaves our right. house as garbage. So it's a very, you know, and we're buying the green, kitty litter that we can or whatever but we know it's not compostable it goes to right. landfill but it's derived from greener pastures <laughs> and, sure. and that's the other thing about diapers we kind of talked about it on the food packaging thing but you know these diaper companies as they develop products that are plant-based polymers and they're bringing in you know materials to create their product and it performs to the level that consumers want that's that's promising but we're just not there yet on a system-wide situation and and we want to we want people to do shall we talk about uh cloth diapers a little bit sure you absolutely Be before we go there i wanted to make just two okay. more points that we're going to include okay. in the show notes so there are a couple of places that do diaper composting new zealand and toronto both do them and you kind of alluded right. to this a little bit so they're collected as a separate thing and for those of you who want you know those of you who are tuning in are awesome waste nerds you probably want to dive a little deeper into this um, they often, they do what we call an in-vessel system. So they're using an anaerobic digester. So the way that we compost here in Seattle, and we talked about this a little bit at the top of the show before you joined, Pat, was that Lens and Cedar Grove do kind of what you think of as like a large, you know, aerated static pile, right? And so they're kind of open, they're not enclosed, they're not in-vessel. So it's a very different way of composting. It, you know, in-vessel allows you to get to that super high heat and for Toronto, a large amount, you know, they're further north than us. It's probably not as, as viable for them to do that, the kind of composting that we do here. They convert a lot of that to biogas. So, you know, we talk a lot about what works in our system because solid waste systems everywhere are very unique. You know, there's a lot of commonality, but everybody kind of chooses some different nuances. Yes. But we will definitely include those links in the show notes, which are really interesting. And um, 
you know, kind of as the lead into cloth versus disposable diapers, which is definitely one thing that Ellen is struggling with, which I can absolutely empathize with. It is so hard to make that decision. And, you know, I just want to say like at Ask Evelyn, we are here to just provide information for you. It's such a personal right. choice, like everything that you're going to consume and how you dispose of your waste. You know, we're here just to provide you with some knowledge and some choices because there's no right or wrong answer. And we really want to encourage you to just be aware and do what works for you and your family and your community. So with that, yeah. um, you know, Pat, you, you guys point. chose cloth diapers. We chose a little bit of both, you know, uh, convenience is king. We always say that, right? Yep. It's like, hey, if you're going to be on the road headed to grandma and grandpa's for the weekend, we're going to go disposable. So, um, but if we're in, we were at home during the day, regular work day, work week, um, our son, when he was, ch when he was infant, uh, uh, he's in college now, but um, we did cloth diapers by day. And then overnight, he would use disposables because they're so absorbent. And then he could sleep, you know, wouldn't have to change them and whatnot. So you kind of can kind of do those things. And the cloth diapers, you know, to do those at home, you can do you can do a service, you know, where right. a company comes and takes a bag yep. every week and leaves you a bunch of clean ones. Or you can just buy, you know, a couple dozen of them or maybe three or four dozen, depends on how often you want to do laundry. <laughs> and just, uh, right. you just kind of empty out the solids into the toilet and flush it. And then we would throw the soiled diaper into a, a soapy water bucket down in the yep. slop sink in the utility room and just let them sit and soak, you know, pre-soak, if you will. Yep. And then we'd run a load of diapers when the bucket was full. I mean, it would, it would be a, a ripe load, you know, going in. But coming out, it'd be totally clean and good. Yeah. And it's cloth, you know. It's, right. You know, the funny thing is, the disposable diapers are not, like, they've been around forever, right? So cloth diapers were how many people still alive today right we're born and raised, you know, so yep. it's, I think that's changing <laughs> over time. But um, the point is that it, it's, it's not like you say, whatever works for each consumer is great. We want everybody to think about waste prevention as part of sure. their groove. And if they can kind of blend in and do a little bit of this, it's kind of like, you know, getting coffee in a reusable mug as many right. times a week as you can. Every diaper you can, every, you know, turn of a diaper use that you can uses a reusable cloth diaper, the better, but uh, no guilt, Absolutely. just, you know, do whatever works, especially that Absolutely. time in life. I mean, I know. so much it's, going it's, on. I know, there's a, so, there's a ton going on. So Ellen, cut yourself some yeah. slack. It's okay, hopefully we provided some really good information for you. Um, I know that I saw some cloth diapers that were outside with disposable inserts. So you're cutting down on the waist there. So again, oh, yeah. lots and lots of options. Kind of a, so. a hybrid approach, yeah. A hybrid approach, yeah. so. But absolutely. So again, we'll have some really good links to some information about kind of um, diaper composting and then a much uh, noted study done by the environmental agency in the UK that compares cloth versus disposable diapers. So if you guys are interested, you guys can read about that there. So Ellen, thank you for your question and everybody yes. keep them coming, which was really great. That was good. All right, we're to the point in our, in our show where we talk about our weekly waste challenge. And this week, I'm really excited because we're talking about compost hacks. So ways to deal with your compost waste. And, you know, we've got quite a few. And Pat, I was going to lead us off. So we give away, I'm like, mine's actually, I took it from my kitchen and it's, it's full of compost. So I'll spare you guys that, that uh, peek inside. <laughs> But this one works great, right? Uh, well, why we give these ones away, it kind of has all of the features that you want to look for in a compost container that you can find in so many other things. It's, you know, it's durable. It's big enough right, yeah. to hold all the stuff. And it's got a lid that closes, right? Ooh. So yeah. ooh, I got to take that out. Um, <laughs> So one of the hacks that I'm not going to show you because it would involve like looking into my compost bin, which, you know, is okay, um, is that one thing that we do, you can use the compostable plastic liners inside here to keep it yeah. clean. Certainly helps. Yeah. I tend to line mine with paper or paper towels. I'll kind of keep a stack of paper yeah. towels that we use because right. some, right. we don't use many, but we do use some yeah. and I'll put those in the bottom to kind of keep it clean. So those are really the main features you want to look for. Our other compost container is uh, the giant yogurt tub. So, you know, these are great. We eat a lot of yogurt at my house. And so it's got a nice lid that snaps on. You can wash it really easily. You can put it through the dishwasher and that works pretty good. I love it. It was free, it's reused. And then when you're done with it, it's totally recyclable. I know. I mean, you know, that's great. Great, job. Exactly. great option. All right, Pat, you had some really good show and Okay, tell. so I'm gonna do this. I'm getting high tech here, here we go. 
I'm gonna flip a roo. All right, how do you see that okay? Yep. All right. So that's basically the bucket you just had. It's our standard yep. SPU provided bucket. It's the one, and this one has the bag, you know, on there. So that's that's what we use upstairs at our house as well. But um, so I want to show and tell a few of the products, you know. And again, you can go low tech, you can go, but you can also go high end. This here stainless steel comes in three sizes. Um, you know, it's it's pretty cool. It has these little little round holes in the top, and there's a filter in there, a carbon filter to deal with the that's small very fancy. stuff. Very so fancy. it's a very fancy option, very fancy. Then there's, uh, you know, Good Grips. Everybody loves that brand, you know, for different utensils and things in the kitchen. Yep. Well, they make a pretty pretty snazzy little unit. And the cool thing about this one is, and I used this for a while, I tried it out once, it's totally smooth on the inside. There's no, like, little cracks or corners or anything. It's just like a, a really smooth discharge. So you Easy clean out. Bag. Easy clean Absolutely. out. That's right. Then there's the really nice, you know, kind of like the – the different crockery versions. And if you don't like that color, well, they've got lots of colors. So, you know, nice. you go to your, your high-end kitchen store, you can get some of those. Then there's all kinds of gadget style ones, the step-on versions and the kinds with two or three different pockets inside. And this pink one here is a is recycled content plastic. So that's kind of cool to help close the loop on that deal. Um, and then like what you had, you had, you know, just a product of yogurt, but there's all these snap top containers now that are great all different sizes. Um, and speaking of the hacks, I mean, what people will do is they'll load, they'll load into something like this and then put it in the freezer or they'll oh, put it totally. back in the refrigerator, you know, one or the other. If it's a sealed top container, it's not going to smell anything up. No. And it's so if you can snap the top with one of those rubber gasket little lids like that, you can really um, contain it nicely. So then the other thing I was going to mention, and this is a little bit of a you know, a little picture into my world. On PBS, there's a show that they run called, uh, and I'm forgetting what it's called. It's called- America's Test Kitchen. America's Test Kitchen, that's it. And they do product testing. So, you know, the kitchen compost pail made it onto America's Test Kitchen. We've, we've made it, Becca. This is like mainstream know, right? now. So, I know. you know, I just wanted to put that out there, like say, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're right in the mainstream now. We're on TV, so it's all good. <laughs> I did want to say like the one thing, you know, I mean, those of you who watch our show, you know that, you know, Pat and I, we are, what's the, what's the, the, the nicest way to say that we're super cheap? Oh, we're yeah. Thrifty. We're yeah. frugal. We're very thrifty. We're, we're thoughtfully thrifty. We are thoughtfully thrifty in a way that sustains resources. Like, I'm with you. Right. Yeah. And so the great thing about this one is you're right. It's free. If it's, you know, it's meant to keep food safe, right. And keep the food inside. So it's a really good container. It's nice yeah. and wide. So when you're scraping plates in, it's really good. We'll use kind of the smaller yogurt containers if we don't buy this one, kind of the next quart size, which is really good for sticking into the freezer or the refrigerator if you're, you know, right. you know, heading out and you don't have time to take it out and you it might it might be getting a little ripe. You can just stick it in there and it's fully contained. Yeah. So I really like that. I like that as a as a as a little hack. We've got plenty of those. Yeah. So that's good. But well, I do. Uh, one for of the more things hacks, I was thinking right? about for the for the paper liner was that one of our coworkers, Socorro Medina, who is very very sharp, um, she uses she often encourages folks to kind of make a little origami um, like paper pouch to stick yeah. into her compost containers, which is great. Yeah. So, got a right, funny we, question here on the chat. We uh, do plastic bags. I mean, it's pr it's probably worth talking about real quick here. All these bins and the, and the mention we made of the green plastic compostable bags is really the only bag you would want to use. Now, if you want to use a plastic bag in your pail, in your kitchen catcher for your compost, one could do that to keep their compost bin clean, but you have to empty the compost out loosely into the compost cart. That plastic is not, of course, allowed yeah. in the compost cart. So just don't get tripped up there. And, and, and you know, if it gets a little rank, because it does, it gets a little, it starts to turn a little bit. And so... You know, the emptying out of the bag into a cart, it could it could uh, dissuade one from continuing on the program if, uh, if you know right. what I mean. So, you know, you could use it if you're in a pinch and you want to, you know, sure. that's, that's how, because often you get those bags. And I know like Trader Joe's, they actually have, if I'm not, I don't go there that often, but I think they're giving out the compostable bags in mm -hmm. their produce department. Yep. So if you buy, you know, some potatoes or apples, you can put them in a compost bag mm -hmm. and use that. That's great. And I think we're going to see more and more of that from companies, sure. grocers and, and stuff. But um, so in that case, you, you get a, you know, but a lot of people just get the plastic bags from the grocery store. Uh, there's those reusable mesh bags too one can use, but 
anyway, I just thought I'd mention that from the question that came up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I know that some apartments have kind of piloted a program where um, there's a thing called a sidekick that's specifically for the used yes. plastic bags where right. you, you, that's attached to the food and yard waste carts. You would go down and do exactly what you just talked about. You yeah. would go take it down there, empty the bag into right. the compost cart and then throw the plastic bag away. Yeah. You can do that in single family too. You know, your carts are generally right next to each other. And if that's what you got, fantastic. Because yeah. you know, those, those garbage, those plastic bags are going to generally go in the trash anyway. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's a good hack. It's a good thing. Yeah. And, and, tell, and send us more, y'all. If you, if you have any other ways you manage your compost in your kitchen, then shoot us a note. We're happy to hear from you. Totally. I actually, we have one question that came in at the top of the show, Pat, okay. and it's about um, for small businesses in the restaurant industry primarily, do you have information on how to locate the best location to dump their compost? I'm guessing that mm -hmm. they want to know where as a small business if they don't have a collection service. Well, they usually do. Waste. Yeah. I mean, food service businesses usually have collection service right. that, where the truck comes to their site and collects sure. it because there's usually so much of it and it's reoccurring and such, it's worth it. But if they wanted to figure out another option, uh, they can contact us, the Green Business Program. That's 206-343-8505 or Green Business at Seattle. Okay. You can always shoot us a note. Um, generally, there's not a lot of self-haul that goes on at food waste. Right. Um, so I, w I would want to talk with that restaurant to figure out what, what's their goal and how they, and the other thing is if you don't have a lot and you don't want to sign up for service, check out the restaurant next door or the guy, you know, whoever's next door because yep. you can combine services. There's no sure. rule against sharing service. So okay. If you're a restaurant that has tip. a very small amount, like you're just selling pastries and coffee and it just doesn't amount to much, then, you know, partner with the restaurant next door or the school next door or whatever, because those are ways to kind of, Keeping it local, keep the cost down, which we like, yeah. and uh, and making sure you have that convenient option to get rid of your compost every day. Cool. Those are some good options. I didn't realize yeah. you could combine services, yeah. but that seems yeah. like a great way to, you know, make some friends next door. That's right. So, all right. So next week, our, our weekly waste challenge is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to quite be a challenge, but we get all kinds of questions about what kind of stuff is compostable. Right. And we had kind of like scary things that are compostable. And so yes. we'll talk about all those kinds of things that people share with us, because I think that you guys might like a little peek behind the curtain of questions that we get. And Pat, can you repeat that number slowly for yes. uh, this watcher to call? Sure thing. So the Green Business Program, the citywide green business, you can always send an email at greenbusiness at seattle.gov. And the phone number is 206-343-8505. All right. Awesome. I have a feeling you're going to you're going to get reached out to. That will be great. We'd love to hear from them. That's fantastic. All right, folks, one more reminder before we sign off for the week. And that is we have our final reuse and recycling collection event happening in Rainier Valley. That is going to be happening on Saturday, October 24th from nine to one. And we are here to take back electronics, small appliances, uh, bulbs, batteries, and paper for shredding. At these events, we often take household goods or styrofoam, and we will not be taking those at this event. But styrofoam, as we've talked about on this show, if you have styrofoam, we will pick that stuff up for free at your house. Just schedule a special item pickup at seattle.gov slash special items, and we will come and get that bag of styrofoam. Great so service. if you have any of those five items, one more time quickly, electronics, small appliances, bulbs, batteries, or paper for shredding, come on down to the Rainier Valley Kaiser Permanente on Rainier Avenue from 9 to 1 this Saturday. We'd love to see All you. All right. That's awesome. So, and we will be having more collection events in 2021. So thank you guys for your patience and thanks for everyone who's come out. And with that, that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for hanging with our technical yes. difficulties. Yes. It's always great to see you guys tune in. Thank you all for your questions. We love them throughout the week. And we love when you tune in and you, you uh, send them to us in the chat. That's fantastic. Keep them well. coming. Keep, Keep them coming. Love it. All right. And with that, I'm Becca Fong. And thank you guys so much. Uh, and remember, life is simpler with less stuff. Hey, and I'm Pat Kaufman. Remember to recycle right. See you next time. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.